Hello everyone and welcome back to the Manufacturer Series in 2019. It's the official season and this is round number three. The first round we've got with the Group 3 cars, GT3 cars essentially. And we're here at La Sarf or Le Mans because of course when this race happened, the Le Mans 24 hour was also on as well. So Nations race was also at La Sarf. Uh, but we're here in Group 3. This is our quality lap. Obviously we don't have much time for a quality lap. So we sprinted round. If you burn for like... A minute uh, and then sprinted around again on the outlap to make sure we had the heat in the tires and here we go with the lap not the best first chicane we could have done that slightly quicker a couple of attempts down there as we head down this hill now towards this left hander this one was always tricky the rear always wanted to step out you only get on the throttle really early try and get on the inside on the right here not too much on the inside because otherwise the rear will come out tetra rouge my word this corner was heavy on penalties if you go over that curb or go over the white line not even the curb you're going to get a half a second penalty. Fortunately for us, we don't get one. So we continue on. And you can see Jomas and Key up ahead. I was so, so hoping to catch the slipstream here. The Audi doesn't have good top end speed. It's got good initial acceleration, but then struggles at the top end. And we needed that slipstream to really push us on into that low 57 sort of area. Um, as you can see, Bellin's got a 56.9 there. So a really good lap by Bellin. Bellin in the 4 GT, similar to Key there. Uh, and Jomas in that Jaguar. Leaving that chicane, you don't want to run too wide at that chicane. We've got a 15.1 there. We really should be in the 14, so not the best of laps at the moment. Uh, but it's clean, which is the main priority here. It is absolutely clean. As we continue on now to the second chicane on this Mulsanne straight. Uh, and you can see they're side by side up ahead. I did wonder what was going on here a little bit because you either help each other with tic tac toe or bumper draft or whatever you want to do. Uh, so I did wonder what was going on. Effectively, it was helping me catch up a little bit, and I was hoping here to really get into that slipstream. But once again, I'm just out of it. I'm talking inches here, just out of it. But then the minute we leave this corner, and then we start hitting the top end speeds, we're going to lose out to the four GTs, the Nissan GTRs, all uh, Toyota Supras, uh, the Peugeot Vigil Gran Turismo car, which was the best car here, apparently. Um, because we'd done a race prior to this, and Lewis, LZR Lewis, had actually won the race in that Peugeot. Vision Gran Turismo car, so Pug Power returning to the Manufacturer Series. Uh, we're just not in it. Uh, so we continue on out of the Mulsanne corner there. And uh, as you can see, we're still inches away here. Still a clean lap though, which is what we're after really. You know, there's a lot of people that will be getting penalties here. And the further back on the grid, uh, when we go to that grid walk, we'll see the big, big penalties that have happened. As you see up ahead, Kia's has overtaken Jamas there as they head towards Indianapolis here. Don't cut the inside of Indianapolis here, you'd get a massive penalty, so we just want to clip the curb slightly and then come into the braking zone. Try and straighten that braking as best as we can. Really, the Audi struggled again there, the rear wants to step out, and we're finding that with the new physics, the R8, the rear just wants to step out all the time under braking, or under any weight transfer at all. So it's going back to like the very first physics that we had, so before the... Um, the first world tour at the Nürburgring, obviously I'm there right now, which is why you've got a, a lot of videos recently. Um, the MR cars were very twitchy under braking with a weight transfer, and it's like we've got that again now. The cars are very, very twitchy. You've got to be so smooth on the pedals uh, in order to drive an MR car effectively. Uh, and if you're not, you're not going to drive these MR cars effectively. So I'm really having to adapt my driving style even more than normal to be even smoother than normal as well. Uh, as we come through the Porsche curves now, you've got to really try and cut that left-hand side a little bit. We don't cut it as much, and we nearly run too wide there. Uh, you get a half-second penalty there as well if you run wide. As we head towards the final chicanes here, uh, we're about to hit the braking zone just before the, the curbing of the pit entry there. You want to cut the left and cut the right, and then you can really cut the next part really well and we just we went to cut it a little bit too much there so it cost us a little bit of time there and as you can see we're just outside the slipstream in the entire lap a 58.1 uh, we did get a 57.6 in practice so we are half a second down it wasn't the greatest laps but imagine if we'd have had that slipstream just imagine if we'd have had that slipstream but alas we don't and you can see there's a lot of power cars up ahead of us although big shout out to LGR Thomas there in the Ferrari that isn't a power car and he's managed to get that up into P3. Moira starts there on P1 in the Supra very fast car followed by Bellin in P2. LGR Thomas there in P3 followed by Giuseppe in P4. We have Snake in P5, a Jaguar driver there and then Garassa in P6 for the Ford. P7 for Kelsa there in the Lamborghini. P8 for Key, again four. Now we've got the GTRs, Unfazed and Jamie. And then we're starting P11 there in the Audi. 
Uh, P12 for Jamas. Jamas both, in both races started behind me, strangely. That's Matty in P13. It's the fans. So here are the penalties, guys. Four minutes. Four minutes for Mantra as well. Gurn got a four minute one. So you can see these are all the penalties. Carl Williams down there. Four minute 1.2. Stormer, four minute 3.5. So big penalties there uh, the further down the grid we go. Um, so this video is going to be titled something like Race Smarter, Not Harder. And we're about to see that in this race. So first of all, this start, by the way. Can I just comment on this start? This should be a grid start only at, at Le Mans. Don't do any form of rolling start unless the rolling start starts before the chicanes. Because some people get absolutely robbed on that chicane as a start. They really do. So either make it a standing start PD, please. Or start the rolling start so we control it further back. Because nobody should be starting on that chicane the way we do at the moment. But even so, let's talk about the race. So coming into this first chicane, it's all sort of line of stern here. We've all had about equal gap between each other. And it's all about just trying to maintain that slipstream. You can just see up ahead, Unfazed has cut the first part of that chicane uh, and actually got a half second penalty there as we come into this left hander. Again, we're just trying to monitor the car here, try and be smooth as possible, trying to avoid any sliding. We're trying to save our tyres a little bit. Tyre saving isn't necessary in this race. There's only four laps of this circuit as well. Uh, it's definitely not going to pit either. Uh, but, you know, if we can save our tyres a little bit, it helps later on in the race because, of course, we have that little bit more grip that we wouldn't necessarily have. As you can see, we're in the slipstream now of this GTR, um, and uh, we're just trying to close up to Jamie here. So, in my head, straight away, I'm thinking, okay, let's go for tic-tac-toe, as my nan used to call it, when she used to play that with the truck drivers on the motorway. Uh, basically, you keep swapping places all the way down the straights. That way, you each benefit from the slipstream. Uh, and I was a bit concerned about bumper drafting, because we do know that that does give SR downs to the driver who is being hit. Uh, so you can see unfazed there, going to take the penalty now, so going to that right side. So I just go to the left here, uh, and I know Jamie's going to overtake me, so I'm not going to try and defend that. I'm just going to move over, let Jamie go by, happy days. I'm not going to put pressure on him to you know, defend that position, it's all his. Um, so I'm just going to let him come in here, there we go. Uh, you can see unfazed is catching me as well, and then I noticed unfazed was going to... Well, he, he sort of backed off a little bit, so at that moment in my head I'm like, okay. Okay, oh by the way, the race is in the, the live stream of the race is in the description if you want to watch this live. But I'm thinking in my head, Unfazed is racing smart here as well. So I've got two GTRs with me, and I'm, I'm myself, you know, I'm, I could do well in the handling section. If we all work together here, and this is what I was hoping, and it appears that that's what we're doing. I can see Unfazed again, just pushing me along a little bit here. So I just let off, I don't want to put Jamie under pressure. We can catch up to Key. We can catch up to the cars in front. Let's work smart here. And this is what you should do when you race, guys. If you can find some drivers who are going to race smart, race smart with them. So we advance to the, but near the start of lap two. We're just, just into it now. Going through Tetra Rouge. Tetra Rouge is all about just not getting a penalty. Keep it safe as you sound. Uh, and again, we come out of Tetra Rouge. Let's do the same thing again. Let's overtake Jamie and then let Jamie come by later on in the race. So you can see we get a good run on Jamie. We just go down the outside here. And then we'll pull back in in a second. I don't know whether Jamie just lifts off a little bit here. Just let me go. Um, and we pull back in. And you can see Jamie's got matching my speed here. Let's off a little bit earlier here. We come into the brakes. You're probably going, why don't you just let Jamie continue on? But we lose a little bit less speed, uh, a little bit more speed. We still gain time doing this. So now I come out this corner. Jamie is going to absolutely rocket past me a lot more faster than I did him. And again, that, that gives us more time overall than if I just stayed behind and left the throttle. As you see, Snake got a penalty there as well. So I'm just trying to get in that slipstream. Um, Jamie's then going to come by here. So Jamie should come back in. Come on, Jamie. I'll let you back in there. Look, I let off. Let him come back in. I don't want him to lose time here. I want him to know that I'm racing smart. Um, I want to catch the guys ahead. I don't want to fight now. We're only halfway in the race. The race is won when you cross that line. When the checkered flag arrives. Before that, it's all about what can I do to get the best out the car the best out of the circuit, the best advantage. And as you can see, that's what I'm trying. Unfazed then goes to the right-hand side, but I'm in the slipstream here. I can't really do anything here, so I'm just going to stay here. Unfazed then falls in uh, behind again, and we should be able to um, catch up to Jamie as well as we come into this braking zone. So we've got a couple of cars up ahead now as uh, we come into this right-hander of Mulsan. And you see Unfazed loses the rear end a little bit there, so he just needs to settle down a little bit. Uh, I said that on live stream as well. I was like, settle down, Unfazed. Settle down. Let's go. Um, so <laughs> we continue on down here as we head towards Indianapolis. But we're going to advance a little bit uh, further on. 
we get a bit of TV camera action. So this is obviously lap number three now. You can see we've caught up to Key. There's Jamie, there's myself, and there's Unfazed. We're still in a line here. Again, it's all about racing smart. That's what we're going for here, racing smart. That's why the whole video is called that. So we're going to continue on towards Tetra Rouge now. Again, playing it safe. Through there we go. Not running extremely wide here, trying to keep it safe. And you can see we've got a train of cars up ahead. We've got a Lamborghini, a BMW in there. We've got the Jaguar of Snake in there as well. Lots of cars up ahead. So we are catching these guys. There's the Ferrari of LZR Thomas uh, up ahead as well. That Ferrari's going to struggle a little bit on top end versus those other cars as we now go to my perspective here as we head down the Mulsan. So you can see Keith's on the right side. I just let off here because I could sort of imagine Key wanted to come back in here and two by two through the chicane would cost us a lot of time. No point wasting time here. We've got another lap to go yet. And look, we can see that pack up ahead. Race smart here. We continue out of that corner. And you're going to watch the GTR on the Ford just start accelerating away a little bit here. Uh, and I'm just trying to maintain some form of speed to try and keep with them. You can see them accelerating. As now we we'll continue towards the second chicane. And uh, yes, again, smarter, not harder. Race harder, you ruin your tyres. Race smarter. So at this point... I'm right behind Jamie. I'm trying to look for my braking zone here. I go into the braking zone. Just slightly tap Jamie here. So my mistake. Fortunately, everybody survives. That was my mistake. Big mistake. Um, that GTR is massive. That I, I literally, I'm trying to monitor where the braking is. I'm off the throttle a little bit. You know, lots going on. I'm faced on my left hand side. It literally was my mistake. As I say, fortunately, it cost, it cost a little bit of time as a group. But it didn't cost us a huge amount of time so I just bumped a draft in Jamie here I wanted to, to make sure I didn't fall off this pack so I wanted to get ahead of Unfazed a little bit um, just to make sure but unfortunately I can't do that so I back out of it I'm just going to sit behind these three power cars at this moment in time as we leave that corner once again let's go to some TV camera look at that oh it looks amazing uh, I've got to say the TV cameras and just GT Sport in general just looks so good it really really does as we continue on now towards Indianapolis you can see the Lamborghini and Ferrari there battling so we've got a group of five cars and another group of four cars here I think it's five cars um, anyway and uh, yeah again it's all about trying to catch that next group can we do it you can see behind as well as the BMW there of Mantfa and Jomas of the Jaguar also trying to catch up to us it's all about working smarter here and if you do that you will get better results as you can see we are catching that group up ahead now uh, so Jamie Key Unfazed and myself the group of four here are catching the group up ahead as we continue on out of Arnage and we head towards the Porsche curves and with a big Porsche banner there as well looks so good does it look at that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, five cars up ahead. That is a five-car train up ahead. We're a, a four-car train, and look how close we are, really. Uh, this is fantastic rating, as in we go once again. The Porsche occurs. The penultimate time, of course, as uh, we come through here. Now, this is actually better for the Audi to be ahead, because I can get a bigger gap, and it allows a bigger overshoot on the Mulsanne straight. But uh, at this point in time, I'm at the back, and to be fair, you know, I should be at the back. I did cause a little bit of an error earlier on. So, back to racing action here. On my perspective now, we've got Unfazed all over the back of Key. Um, I am hoping they don't fight, and I am hoping they continue on as we head towards the chicanes now. Just breaking softly here, you can see that. Uh, but Key, unfortunately, just clips that curb on the left-hand side, and it, it can make the MR cars very unstable. I experienced it a couple of times in time trial, and it sent Key to Narnia. So Key out of that battle now. There's only three cars in this train, uh, and we've got to catch a group of five cars. Can we do it? You can see that train up ahead, though. They are battling. This is the last lap, of course. This is where the racing action actually counts now. What can we do here to gain the most out of the car and out of the circuit? As through there we go. We notice a penalty up ahead. That's good for us. We notice a few penalties up ahead now. Well, Faze has a penalty. Jamie has a penalty. Uh, we've got Grass up ahead who doesn't have a penalty. Uh, but there's cars battling all over the show here. As through there we go. Into the right. And then we head towards Tetra Rouge. This is all about not getting a penalty at Tetra Rouge now. We've saved our tyres really nicely as well. If you notice during the uh, entrance to those ch chicanes on the last lap. As Unfazed goes wide at Tetra Rouge. You'll notice that penalty will go up. Same for Jamie as well. Both get a one second or an additional half a second. Another penalty up ahead as well. I think mean, that's Garassa. So lots of penalties happening here. But you'll notice that the chicanes on the last lap. I was just doing half braking. That means a lot less tyre wear. As you can see, Unfazed trying to get ahead of Jamie now. All these penalties up ahead. So it's all about can we take advantage of this? So we try and get as close as we can. I was tempted to go for the move here, but I backed out of it. I didn't want to lose time because I realised there's all sorts of happening up ahead. And look at that. We have closed in on that pack up ahead because they're fighting as well. Last lap. This is where it all counts. So I'm now trying to work out where everybody's going. Jamie does a really smart move there. You know, shout out to Jamie for that. 
So LZR Thomas had a penalty. Snake had a penalty as well. I believe maybe Grasser had one. I'm not sure. There was all sorts of penalties in there. But we've gone from P10 to P6 now. As we head down towards the second chicane. For one last time. What can we do up ahead? We can see Garassa and Giussetti are fighting now. The BMW versus the Ford GT. As we head towards that braking zone. We're trying to keep it calm and steady here. Try and get an advantage where we can. We accelerate out of here. We are in that slipstream of that Ford GT and the BMW. And Giussetti gets a penalty as well. As we continue on now towards the Mulsanne Strait. Can we maintain this position? There's a lot of fast cars behind us. There's two GTRs behind us. We've got to be careful of all of this that's happening. As we continue on now down towards the Mulsan for one last time. In we go into the braking zone. Just got to be careful behind as well. And we get really close to Giuseppe. As we leave that corner now, we can just plant our foot a little bit there. We are very close to Giuseppe. Now, the next penalty zone is actually after our Nage. So we just have to make sure we stay behind Giuseppe and get out as clean as we can. As we continue on now towards Indianapolis. It's all about flat out racing here. And that Jaguar is going to start to catch us up a little bit. So two and a half temps, there you go, it starts to close us down now, so this is where the top end of the Audi really struggles, you can see other cars are better at the top end, Giuseppe goes for the move on the outside towards Indianapolis, this is a very sketchy move to do, side by side through Indianapolis, they both make contact with each other, and they both force each other off, and we're up to P4, out of nowhere, P4, P10 to P4, as we head towards our Nage now, we come into the braking zone, as we try and turn the car, we just break a little bit wide here, Oh, and we get, uh, hit the limiter there. So we broke a little bit deep, went wide, hit the limiter. So unfortunately, Snake's going to have the inside for the Porsche curve today. I can't do anything about it. I am hoping the Audi can pull ahead, but I can't do it. The Audi doesn't have enough power. And look at Unfaze coming now. Now, I could not believe this move that is about to happen. Unfaze goes to the left-hand side. And he pulls it off. He pulled it off. I was stunned by that move. A big shout-out to Unfaze because if he even got that remotely wrong... It was carnage. And this time, you know, other people may have actually outbroke themselves. Like they may, in my position, they may have outbroke, hit unfazed or whatever it might be. But unfazed, nailed it, nailed it perfectly. So shout out to unfazed for that move. That was a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant move. Down to P6 from P4, unfortunately. Can't do much about it. We're still up from P11 where we started. So we come into the chicanes one last time. But Snake outbreaks himself. So now I'm going to have to back completely out of it. And I'll show you why after. As I wait for Snake to gather it. Um, and unfortunately I lose the rear a little bit there. And Jamie gets a sneaky move down the uh, inside there. So I drop to P7. But I'm back up to P6 with Snake's penalty. Now I was a bit frustrated a little bit with that. Because I, I reckon I should have had P5. Um... But I had to really back out of it because Snake was going all over the place. And I'm going to show you why now. So we're going to this previous time slot. And this is Bellin. Bellin versus Moira here. So I want you to look at this now. Look at where Moira is. Look at where Bellin is. Bellin goes to the moves. This is the last lap again, of course. So Moira actually outbreaks himself here. Goes into that chicane. Now he's lost the rear end at this point. Now Bellin can't really go anywhere. Slightly taps Moira here. Look at the penalty he gets. Look at the penalty he's about to get. Five second penalty. For that, and that's what I wanted to avoid. So I, that's why I backed completely out of it, and that's why it was, you know, a bit frustrating a little bit. But Jamie took the opportunity, which is fair enough. Here it is again. Moira just outbreaks himself. Belly can't really go anywhere here, and uh, Moira just slides back on. He can't do anything either. The car's out of control. Belling should not get a five-second penalty for that. Should not. But fortunately for Belling and Moira, they have a good race second time round, um, and uh, we have a good race. Here. That's the best that we're going to do here. Two point one k points. That's it for me, guys. Thanks very much for watching. I will see you in the next video.